Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, lightning, flash floods, deep space news, and confirmation that global seismicity is interdependent rather than an individual sport. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Very calm day, even with dark coronal holes and bright active regions, including the next one becoming visible at the limb on the left. We did see a far side eruption release a CME that you can easily pick out here on SOHO. Not going to hit Earth, not tremendously powerful, but certainly the first inner system energizing in weeks. Let's come next to the solar wind, where telemetry is calm except for blue, second from the top where phi angle went from planetary return streams to the outflow IMF from our star. We do have very calm conditions right now, but that phi angle shift means the next solar wind incoming is going to be from those Earth-facing coronal holes and is expected to impact Earth tonight or tomorrow morning. Let's go to the satellites. This is dirty long-wave radiation up first, showing 24 hours of the daytime development exploding into sunset summer storms. I'm going to overlay lightning on top of the day-night cloud phase, and after we run that through, we're going to draw the clouds back to just watch the lightning play out. Of course, if lightning comes through the valley, she's not getting past the gate without an offering to the observers. Unlike yesterday's news, we do now have the step leaders and return strikes, often in multiples. At 240 frames per second, I've slowed these down to more than 10% normal speed, so we can see that the step leaders do break out like cosmic ray cascades, and the return strokes are confined to the electric connection made between Earth layers. The best of the night is the last one, slowed down to 5% normal speed. It resembles the cloud only discharges we saw at the start of the week. Some of the worst weather this week hit Austria. It seems all the rain normally distributed over the European continent is hiding out there. Meanwhile, in southern Alberta, Canada, they got a nice glimpse of winter as the ground was blanketed with hailstones both small and large. Let's start the top stories aesthetically with red supernova remnant filaments and white star forming leftovers. Those filaments should be magnetic like many similar structures we see. A rogue dwarf has been discovered about 20 light years away. It is 12 times the mass of Jupiter and has a magnetic field far more powerful. What's interesting is they say that studying its magnetic field could upend some of what's known about stellar and planetary field dynamos, including ours. It was 2015 when the first news came out that earthquakes can trigger others across the planet, and it's nice seeing their confirmation now. This is what happened after last year's high-magnitude mega-drought, and the observers do expect that again here this year as we approach and enter the fall season. The more important supernova story of the day is being looked at by both Hubble and Gemini, and that's after it was demonstrated earlier this year that the remaining binary at the center of the nova has a periastron so extreme that the whip around produces cosmic rays. But the new stories are about how the shock remnants are the fastest flowing and longest lasting in terms of how they are staying together as an expanding shell, and they include a new animation of what they believe was a trinary system that completely lost equilibrium. It appears one star defies gravity upon near ejection, and when it does come back it is allegedly unable to perturb the wind's outflow shape. It is still very cool. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. Pre-order our new textbook today. It is the layman's version and 30% off right now, only in this pre-order period. International options coming soon. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.